in the midst of one of the planet's most devastating mass extinctions, in some of Africa's most iconic landscapes, its charismatic carnivores cling to the edge of existence. Yet, top predators are elusive, and attempts to count them have been plagued with difficulties. In many areas, how many remain is unknown, and how they are responding to their biggest challenges remains a mystery. How can you save what you don't know? And how do you count some of the planet's most elusive species and what remains of their world? Though technology continues to provide ever new ways to collect information, from using camera traps to drones, many of these areas lack the resources for their use. Across Africa, areas with lions face funding deficits of more than 1 billion US dollars every year. Combined with growing human pressures, this is a dangerous recipe. One where these animals may be slipping into extinction in front of our very eyes. So, tell me, how do you find some of Africa's most elusive species in some of the region's wildest landscapes? For me, the answer came on a crisp African morning bathing in the sunrise of the savannah. I was three weeks into my search for Pavarotti the leopard, and I'd just driven into a disused warthog burrow when I heard a tourist approach. They told me they'd seen Pavarotti that very morning, and then, with a smile, they were gone. It was here that I began to appreciate the volume of data collected daily through tourism, and of its power if we could only harness it for conservation. Could an army of Africa's wildlife guides and tourists hold the key to saving these iconic species from extinction? I set out to test exactly this. Over three months, 25,000 GPS tagged tourist photographs were collected, curated and analysed from one tourist lodge. These were then compared with results from more commonly used survey approaches. The results were startling. Tourist photographs could be used to accurately count African carnivores in the wild. And at up to 97% of the cost of more commonly used methods in a virgin survey season. Today, I'm working with inspiring interdisciplinary innovators to build the partnerships and technology to scale the solution further. Prior to the pandemic, we partnered with lodges across Botswana to introduce this approach across the country. And whilst COVID has put a pause on these plans, progress continues in other areas. From using machine learning to tell individuals apart, to developing AI-powered cameras that attach to vehicles, take pictures, and automatically survey wildlife. From whales to elephants, from puffins to zebra, and from fish to lion. Holiday snaps could prove to be the salvation of species across the planet. So, as we consider what a post-COVID world might look like, I urge you and your organizations to think how you contribute to the creation of new tools to address the biodiversity crisis. And what other innovations may lie around the corner if you too throw caution to the wind and invest in an unlikely innovation.